Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. Thank you guys for being such amazing people. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about one thing I'm very thankful for at the end of the video. Uh, but I'm also thankful for you guys that take the time to watch these and share them. Uh, we have really grown in viewership on the uh, Shiloh Relics YouTube channel. I'm very thankful. And we just got back from the show in Dalton, Georgia. Great show if you have never been. It's 500 tables of Civil War stuff. Happens usually the first weekend in February every year. Been doing it for decades now, and it's a wonderful show. Um, and while we were in Georgia, I ended up uh, getting a couple of things, and I thought I'd share them with you because they're really neat. And you know me, I like the neat stuff, and these are really neat and still affordable. Uh, <clears throat> this piece, you can actually get one for under 300 bucks these days which is still a lot of money, but it's still a lot of cool for, for that kind of money these days. What they are, uh, the Bank of Augusta, Georgia, uh, was chartered in December of 1810. It was uh, a bank that was designed to compete with the, the main center of business at the time, which was Savannah, Georgia. Uh, hi, all my friends in Savannah, Georgia. I hope to see you guys soon, because I love that town. Uh, go down, uh, get my fortune told, and have a good time. Uh, but sorry, took a tangent. That's going to happen. My caffeine has kicked in very well this morning, as you can tell. But the Bank of Augusta, Georgia, chartered in December, 18, uh, December of 1810, uh, made it through the Civil War and closed like a lot of the banks did in 1866 because the Confederate money was worthless. Everything they had uh, put their hopes and dreams in failed with the Confederacy, and so they closed 1866. So when you see a Bank of Augusta, Georgia note, <clears throat> you know it wasn't made after the Civil War. Uh, the time right before the Civil War, a lot of those Southern banks, the smaller banks and the banks that were large like this, they had over a million dollars uh, in assets at the time, they made beautiful notes. Most all of them were engraved up north by the American Banknote Company, places like that. They were basically works of art that were worth some money. Um, the one that they did, which has always been one of my favorites, is this note. And this is an uncut sheet of four. They're four, four dollar, yep, that's right, four dollar notes from the Bank of Augusta in Augusta, Georgia. They're made right before the Civil War, late 1850s. They will have the printed date and the last two digits were empty so they could write those in by hand. The note itself, really cool. The center scene has uh, Archimedes lifting the world. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's a pretty cool scene. So check that out. I love that scene. It's really cool. On the sides though, they flank on this side with uh, Benjamin Franklin. And that side's got old George Washington. A lot of banknotes, north and south, put George Washington on there because everybody liked to claim him because he was the first president and he was a Virginian. He was a Southerner. <clears throat> and it wasn't a bad thing back then. He it wasn't a horrible person that everybody wanted to do away with. Uh, sorry, another tangent. That's going to happen. Sorry, I've had my feathers ruffled lately. Can't help it. Uh, but when the war broke out, they had all of these notes that were printed but never issued. During the war, paper became very scarce. So what did they do? They took all of these notes that were printed but never issued, and they knew that they needed smaller denominations. So rather than buy new paper that was a lot more expensive, they flipped that thing over and printed on the other side, because the other side was blank, which is referred to by uh, currency collectors as a note being uniface, just one printed on one side. Fancy word for one side to print. Uh, but they did a series of nine notes, and they did them uh, for fives, tens, twenty fives, fifties, and seventy fives. So you covered the cent denominations with these, and it has uh, up there Bank of Augusta, <clears throat> pretty red ink on the on the denomination and the overprint in the center. They did that a lot of times to make it a little bit tougher to counterfeit, uh, but they did them on the other side of the note. So when you see these cut up, you can only use one of them. So sometimes you'll have a $4 with those printed on the back, uh, which you know is not correct because 
the uh, current, the small denominations were printed in 1863. Well, they printed in 1862, they issued in 1863, because on the note we have the, uh, the date, the printed date of January 1st, 1863. So we know that that's when they were actually uh, printed for issue on the top of the $4 notes that are on the back. So you can find these uh, because they show up fairly, not regularly, but, but you do see them occasionally. And I was able to get two, which I love because I get to show you front and back at the same time. Um, you can go on to shilohrelics.com. You can check those out. I have a few other uncut sheets just because I like them. I think they're really cool that they've made it 160 years and nobody cut them up. Uh, you do see them where they cut them up because this is one of the things that as a dealer, sometimes you have to decide, do I want to preserve the history or do I want to make the nickel? And most of the time folks say, I want to make the nickel because you can uh, buy this sheet for under $300, which is, uh, and you or you can trim it up and have either nine perfect small denomination notes or you can cut it up and have four large denomination notes with Washington, Franklin, and Archimedes on it. So mo a lot of times they get trimmed up just because if you sell those notes individually, you will make more money. Uh, try not to do that because I enjoy the history and I want to preserve the history. But being a dealer does have its uh, stresses at times because you, you want to preserve that history, but you also want to feed your family and buy some baloney for the weekend. So, uh, those of you that have watched these videos and a lot of them that in the early days, I told you about uh, my situation with my uh, wife passing. And I've also told you about one of my pride and joys, my grandson, Rylan. Uh, my grandson, Rylan, in case you haven't watched those, was this is him when he was born. Uh, he was born with cleft lip and cleft palate. Uh, just something that happens, and I'd never heard of it before he were, was born. And uh, uh, when they, we were fortunate enough to take him to Vanderbilt, wonderful doctors up there, uh, the doctor came in, and I, I guess he saw the scaredness in everybody's face, and he told him, he says, Good news is we can help it all. Bad news is you're going to know me the rest of your life. And this is him now. That's my little buddy. Um, but we were fortunate enough to be able to go to Vanderbilt. And luckily I had good insurance and I uh, have been fortunate in life and, and had some money. But it scares you to think of those children and, the, and those parents that can't afford uh, surgeries like we we had to do because they'll they they do the main surgeries and then they do revisions uh for 20 30 years and there's a lot of famous people that uh have had cleft lips peyton manning <laughs> you'd never know it but he did uh and but uh <clears throat> there's an organization that does these for folks that can't does the surgeries for people that can't afford uh, the surgery. And I, I can't imagine not being able to do that. Uh, well, I can't imagine. It scares the ever-loving hell out of me because uh, to see your grandchild there, and if it was your child or anybody else's, that they can't eat correctly. You couldn't use a straw. Uh, but there is a place, uh, it's Smile Train and smiletrain.org. This is the address. You can go on to uh, there and they do these around the world for children that can't afford that surgery and they do amazingly wonderful things uh, just in, in helping the kids of all ages well i go back to <laughs> uh, these videos have let me meet a lot of people that i probably wouldn't have ever met any other way and one of those people saw the videos that i did on smile train and he also saw the ones that i did uh about Lori, my wife that passed. And I go to the Dalton show and I walk by the table and there's a, an envelope sitting there. <laughs> and I don't think anything about it. It said, for Raphael from an, a, a, a kind soul that will remain nameless. Uh, 
<clears throat> and I don't think anything about it. And later, <laughs> uh, Catherine says, you got an envelope over there. And I said, yeah, I saw it. I just figured it was something. And she said, well, open it up. And I open it up and it's this. <laughs> There's a lot of good folks in this world and I'm thankful to know a bunch of them. Uh, it was a cashier's check made out to Smile Train for $1,000. And the guy said, oh, hell, I'm doing it now. <laughs> he told Catherine, he says, I've watched his videos. Don't give him this until uh, we're gone because I don't want to watch him cry. She, and I opened it up, but hell, I started bawling because it just, the kindness that can come out of nowhere and blind you in this world is a wonderful thing. And when it hits, I ain't afraid to show, I ain't afraid to cry because hell, I'm thankful. And, uh, but, and it wrote, said along the bottom of it, uh, in loving memory of Lori Elledge. Uh, Lori was there for the surgeries uh, when he was little. And uh, I like to think that uh, she's up there and she saw that. Uh, so uh, just tell you all that to say that random act of kindness that you do for someone might stick with them a lot longer than you can ever imagine. So, uh, so one, if you got a little extra money, don't be afraid to send it to, uh, after you buy your relics, don't be afraid to send it to smiletrade.org. And if you ain't got money, just be nice to somebody because that little bit of kindness can go a long way in this world. I am so thankful to get to be with you guys. I'm so thankful for my family. So thankful for those friends that I have made. Uh, once we're gone, all that is there is the memory of you. So remember, you write that eulogy every day. Be sure that you write it to the best of your ability and remember that people love you. Hope you all have a great day. Uh, go on and check these notes out. Buy you a couple. I'll catch you next time. Love you guys.